All right, now we're going to switch gears a little bit. We've got to deal with pulleys in a variety of contexts. Now, a pulley is designed to give us a, what's called a mechanical advantage. So here we're going to use a pulley system to lift a 24 kilogram mass. So but in this case, we are not going to have to pull with, you know, in this case, 24 times approximately 10, right around 240 newtons. We're not going to have to pull with 240 newtons of force to lift this thing. That's what's meant by a mechanical advantage. We'll use less force in this case. Now, I'll reference this later, but you don't get a free lunch here. The amount of work required to lift it with or without the pulley is the same, and we'll talk about work later in the semester, but the amount of force is what's reduced with this mechanical advantage in this case. So let's set up our free body diagram here in this case. So our lovely mass has a weight, excellent, and tension in the rope, but where? Well, the tension of the rope acts on these wheels, the lower wheels attached to this mass, and it gets to act on it on both sides of the wheel. And so in this case, that tension actually, in that string, constant throughout, gets to act six times. So on this wheel, in this case, this is a one-dimensional problem. So in this case, sum of our forces, it's gonna equal MA. So in this case, as long as we're either leaving it suspended or moving it at constant velocity, then we'll have no acceleration, some of the force is zero. In this case, the tension gets to act six times. Let's just move that six over. So we'll do 24 kilograms. 9.8 meters per second squared. All over six. And can somebody get me a tension in that rope? Good, 39.2 newtons. There is the tension in the rope in your pulley. Now one thing to note, does it matter which way I pull on the end of this rope? What if I pull horizontal? What if I pull straight down? What if I pull at this angle that's shown? It doesn't. The only, the only thing accomplished by pulling here is putting a tension in that rope. So, and the tension only acts on the mass at these points and it's perfectly vertical regardless of what, what direction I pull on the end here. So it does not matter whatsoever. I just need to get a tension of 39.2 newtons in that rope. All right, let's take a look at number 12. Number 12 is a classic pulley problem here. So in this case, two masses are hooked together over a pulley by a common uh, wire here, common cable. So since they're attached to the same cable, they will accelerate together. Now in this case, which way are they gonna accelerate? So how about the, the 10 kilogram mass? Yeah, he's gonna accelerate down and the five kilogram mass up because he's heavier. So in this case, the first part of the question is what is the acceleration of the 10 kilogram mass, which is the acceleration of either one. So the second part is what is the tension in the rope? Notice the tension in the rope is the same on both sides as well. It's a single rope and therefore it's gonna have the same tension throughout. Uh, we can, so this is a two object problem. We're gonna set up a free body diagram for both of them. Let's start with the one on the left. What force is acting on the one on the left? Yep, he's got a weight. In this case, I'm gonna call it M1G, since there's two masses, I'll call him M1. And then also the tension, great. So if we set up a sum of the forces equation, we'll get T minus M1G, and sum of the forces adds up to MA, but we gotta be very, very careful right here. So if you notice, which way do we say he's gonna accelerate overall? Yeah, down. And we just called M1G, which points down negative, which means we need to make this negative, super common mistake on a pulley problem like this. All right, we can also set up a free body diagram for the other mass. So, and he's got similar forces, we'll call him M2. So in this case, he's got his weight pointing down and his tension pointing up, great. And we can set up a similar equation here, T minus M2G equals MA. Did I get the sign right here? Yeah, in this case, his acceleration is going to be up and tensions up, which we made positive. So that's positive as well. All right. So in this case, the T's, I didn't have to market T1 and T2 because it's the same value of T and I didn't have to market acceleration one and two because it's the same acceleration for both objects as well. All right. So the first question is just, what is the overall acceleration? So to do that, we've got a system of two equations here. So we can substitute for one to solve for the other. So I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to solve this one for T. Oh, and that's an M2 still. 
Should have done that back over here and made that an M1, by the way. All right, let's plug some numbers in here. In fact, you know what? Let's just substitute that right in and do all the number crunching at the end. So I'm going to substitute this in right here so I can get the acceleration of the 10 kilogram mass. So in this case, we're going to get M2A plus M2G minus M1. G equals negative M1A. Now let's plug some numbers in. So M2 is five kilograms times A plus five kilograms times gravity, or acceleration due to gravity, any? 9.8 minus M1 now, so 10 kilograms times 9.8. equals negative 10 kilograms times A. So we've got A showing up in both of these terms here. So I'm going to isolate that over here. We're going to have 15 kilograms times A. And I'm going to move everything else over to the other side here. Uh, in this case, let's reduce this down a little bit. So 9.8 times 10 is 98. 5 times 98 is 49. This becomes positive when I move over to this negative. And this is going to equal 49 newtons. And so acceleration due to gravity is 49 newtons over 15 kilograms. Yeah, 3.27 meters per second squared. And in this case, for the 10 kilogram object, that points down. So that's the magnitude, that's the direction. If I wanted it for the 5 kilogram object, it would have pointed up, but same magnitude. Cool? All right, second half of this problem says, what is the tension in the rope? How am I going to solve for the tension of the rope now? Yeah, I'm just going to take this acceleration and plug it back into either one of these original equations. Since we've been dealing with this one a lot, I'll plug it right back in there. And so in this case, let's carry that back over. So T minus M1G equals negative M1A. So T equals M1G minus M1A. T equals 10 kilograms times 9.8. minus 10 kilograms times our new 3.27 meters per second squared. Somebody get me a tension. Good, 65.3 newtons. Cool, and if I solved it for the other rope, it would also come out to 65.3 newtons. Great. All right, last pulley problem here. A Little bit different than one we had, but I used very Identical masses with a little bit different setup, so we can do a comparison here. Uh, but question number 13 says, what is the maximum acceleration of the 10 kilogram mass? Now let's look at this. Where's the 10 kilogram mass going to accelerate? Down. Great. So will his acceleration be as high as it was back over in question number 12? And why? Yeah, it'll be higher, actually, because in this case, this mass is not pulling back, so to speak, in the same fashion. So here, the other mass is pulling back, a.k.a. gravity here, whereas this one, its gravity, its weight, is actually balanced by the normal force here, and so it's not really pulling back in the same sense. Now, if you notice, though, question number 13 says, what is the maximum acceleration? So why is it worded such a way? Yeah, we're not told this is a frictionless surface. And if it's, you know, if there's friction here, that's another force pulling back here. And actually, we couldn't make the determinations we just did. But if this is frictionless, that's when we'll get a maximum acceleration. And that's what question 13 is addressing here in this case. We'll assume this is frictionless to get that maximum acceleration. Again, it's a two-body problem, and we can set up uh, free, free body diagrams for both. So in this case, yeah, this guy's got a weight, M1G. Again, distinguish the masses, and we got a tension in the rope. So, and some of your forces, T minus M1G, and again, M1A, but yeah, we define tension as positive, its weight as negative, and its overall acceleration is also going to point down, so that is also negative. Great. Our other mass here, what forces are acting on this guy? Yeah, we got tension as well, and yeah, we've got its own weight, M2G but that's perfectly balanced by a normal force here in this case. And if you notice, these aren't even in the direction of motion, and they're just equal and opposite. So I'm totally going to ignore them. But in this direction, 
we're totally going to have a net acceleration. And in this case, the only force I have is T, and therefore it equals M2A. Cool. So if I want to solve for this maximum acceleration, again, these are hooked to the same cable. That A is exactly the same. Since it's the same cable, the tensions are the same as well. So, and I'm just going to take this and substitute it in for tension. And then the only thing I won't know is A, and we'll solve. And so in this case, we get M2A minus M1G equals negative M1A. I'm going to bring all the A's to the left and the other term to the right. You could do it the other way around, whatever. I just don't like negative signs. So I'm going to have M2A plus M1A equals M1G. I'll factor out the A. M2 plus M1 equals M1G. So acceleration is going to equal M1G. I'll start putting the numbers in here. M1 was our 10 kilogram mass. 9.8 meters per second squared. All over M1 plus M2, a total of 15 kilograms. In this case, anybody get me an acceleration here? Good, 6.53 meters per second squared. Indeed higher than the 3.27 meters per second squared we just had.